in the WKYX WNGO Newsroom. I'm Bill Hughes. A 17-year-old Mayfield High School student has been killed and his mother has been kidnapped. According to the Graves County Sheriff's Department, the incident happened this morning at 411 Fairlane Drive in Mayfield, where the teen was killed and police say 34-year-old Kim Thomas was kidnapped by an ex-boyfriend, 40-year-old Terry Froman of Brookport, Illinois. The couple was last seen in Paducah in a 2004 white GMC Yukon with an Illinois license plate that reads T-R-I-C-K-E and the number one. It was last seen at a five-star convenience store in Paducah where the woman apparently tried to get away, but the man dragged her back into the vehicle. Mayfield High School has been notified that one of their students has been killed and counselors are being made available for students. Police are asking for anyone who has seen the vehicle or these people to call state police or local law enforcement. Police say no one should approach them since the man is considered armed and very dangerous. The investigation is obviously continuing, and we will have more details as soon as they are made available. On the national scene, Secretary of State John Kerry is trying to rally 10 Arab nations to support the fight against ISIS, part of a growing coalition that will be led by a retired U.S. general. Fox News Radio's Jared Halpern has more from the White House. Retired Marine General John Allen will lead the broad international effort to fight ISIS, charged with figuring out what role nearly 40 nations will play. Allen has been serving as an advisor to Secretary of State John Kerry. Previously, the general was a deputy commander in Iraq and at CENTCOM, overseeing military actions across the Middle East and North Africa. U.S. military action will be led by General Lloyd Austin. As many as 31,500 fighters could make up the ranks of ISIS, a CIA assessment tripling an earlier estimate. At the White House, Jared Halpern, Fox News Radio. Are more jobs causing more retail spending? It looks like it. Fox News Radio Steve Taylor reports from Washington. Since early winter, American employers have been adding jobs at a healthy pace, and now it seems the newly working are spending. The Commerce Department says retail sales are up 0.6 percent in the latest monthly numbers covering August. That increase is double the July increase. Over the last year, retail sales are up a full 5 percent. The biggest gains this month are in auto sales, plus furniture, electronics, sporting goods, and building materials. In Washington, Steve Taylor, Fox News Radio. A country music legend was arrested in Nashville around 1 this morning. Lynn Anderson, who won the Grammy Award for Best Female Country Vocal Performance in 1970, was arrested on a DUI charge. It all began with a traffic accident on West End Avenue in Nashville. Nashville police are saying Anderson admitted to drinking alcohol and taking prescription medication before the crash, which happened around 9 p.m. near 31st Avenue. In 2004, Anderson was arrested for passing out in her car on the side of an interstate. She has checked herself into the Betty Ford Clinic in the past. Governor Steve Bashir has appointed a task force to study bullying and how to stop it, and one member is from our area. Tom Latek reports. The panel includes 11-year-old Morgan Gass of Paducah, who says she was diagnosed with clinical depression after being bullied. Three years ago, when I was just eight years old, I was bullied by a classmate. She pulled my hair, pinched me on the back of the neck, and even threw her shoulder into my back. The governor says the Kentucky Youth Bullying Prevention Task Force, of which Morgan is a member, will study the issue and recommend practices and policies on how to respond to the problem and prevent it. Tom Latek, KNN News. A Paducah woman has been arrested after an investigation into stolen checks. The McCracken County Sheriff's Department says an investigation began on September 8th when a victim reported four checks were taken from a checkbook at their Farley home and cash. Detectives say the checks were taken by 41-year-old Merlin Kelly, who allegedly wrote the checks to herself and made them appear they were for work she performed. She had been working as a sitter for the family. The total amount of the forged checks was $600. Detectives say Kelly confessed to taking the checks during an interview. She's now in McCracken County Jail. And authorities in Pulaski County, Kentucky, say they've arrested two drunk lawnmower drivers in the same week. Randy Whitaker allegedly drove his lawnmower all over the road after drinking 30 beers. And Sheriff's Lieutenant Brett Whitaker says Gary Ard rode his lawnmower in a Hardee's drive through lane. Uh, he admitted to the deputies when they stopped him that he had been drinking that morning, uh, but decided to go to Hardee's to get something to eat. In Kentucky, it's illegal to operate any motorized vehicle while under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Paul Miles, KNN News. Find more news later right here or anytime at WestKentuckyStar.com.
In the WKYX WNGO newsroom, I'm Bill Hughes. The White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest says, though the United States has no plans at the moment to raise the terror threat level, officials are taking the threat from ISIS seriously and watching the movements of people traveling to Syria and neighboring countries. This is a threat that we are monitoring. It's one that we have been focused on for quite some time. Uh, it has been the focus of intensive discussions inside the administration. It's also been the focus of intensive discussions uh, with governments uh, in the region and around the world. Earlier today, Britain raised its terror level to severe, the second highest level. The decision was related to developments in Iraq and Syria, but there was no information to suggest an attack was imminent. The Ebola outbreak in West Africa is spreading and picking up speed, with a case reported now in Senegal and more than 500 new infections in just the last week. Fox News Radio's Kimberly Davis is monitoring from Cairo. A young man from neighboring Guinea brought the virus to Senegal. On Thursday, the World Health Organization launched a new plan to try and contain the virus. We're talking well over 12,000 people operating over multiple geographies in very, very difficult and high-risk circumstances. As a result, according to WHO's Bruce Eilward, the project will need at least half a billion dollars. The UN Health Agency expects at least 20,000 people in up to 10 countries to get sick before the outbreak is contained. That's something the organization says they didn't expect. So far, about half of those infected have died, more than 1,500 people. Kimberly Adams, Fox News Radio. The U.S. is getting tough with firms and some people who have violated sanctions in place against Iran. Fox News Radio's Jill Nato has details from Washington. The Treasury Department imposing economic sanctions on 25 people and companies accused of a whole host of violations, like helping Iran's missile and nuclear programs and supporting terrorism. The companies getting hit include shippers, oil producers, airlines, and six Iranian banks. The penalties? No more dealings with U.S. firms. And if they have any assets within the U.S., they can't get at them. The U.S. is currently working with six other global powers to come up with a deal with Iran to get Tehran to cut its nuclear ambitions. Talks on that have a deadline now of November 24th. In Washington, Jill Nato, Fox News Radio. The driver of a Callaway County school bus was injured this morning in a crash. The Callaway County Sheriff's Department said the accident happened about 6.50 a.m. on Radio Road near Dexter. The driver of the bus, 49-year-old Terry Swift of Murray, had just started her route and there were no children on board. Swift told deputies that a deer ran into the path of the bus and she swerved to miss it and the bus dropped off the right side of the road. She overcorrected and the bus crossed the opposite lane of travel and came to stop on its side in a ditch. Swift was taken to the murray Callaway County Hospital by the Callaway County Ambulance Service for treatment of her injuries. A teenager faces assault charges after an altercation with his grandfather. According to the McCracken County Sheriff's Department, at around 8.30 Thursday evening, deputies responded to a domestic violence call on Oaks Road. Their investigation determined that 18-year-old Austin Sharp had assaulted his grandfather, 64-year-old Jackie Blassingham. According to deputies, Sharp struck Blassingham several times, allegedly, and then fled the scene with a 12-gauge shotgun. Uh, deputies were told that Sharp liked to stay at a friend's house off Oaks Road, and after an hour search, they found Sharp and arrested him without incident. Mr. Blassingham was transported to Lourdes ER, treated and released. That's Matt McLean reporting. A Paducah resident is using social media to get the word out about what she describes as a horrifying encounter with police, but police say they were just following procedure. Here's Tim Brockwell. Wendy Kester and her husband Cliff were driving near the 100 block of Lone Oak Road Tuesday evening when they were stopped by Paducah police officers and McCracken County Sheriff's deputies. This was no ordinary stop, though, because the vehicle they were riding in had dealer tags that had been reported missing several weeks ago. Officers conducted what is known as a felony stop, meaning they got out with guns drawn and pointed directly at the Kesters, issued loud verbal commands, and placed both Wendy and her husband in handcuffs. During all of this, Kester says officers didn't respond to her questions about why they were being treated this way. Paducah Chief of Police Brandon Barnhill said in a press release that due to the unknown circumstances surrounding the license plate and the then unknown intentions of the vehicle's occupants, officers conducted the felony traffic stop according to policy, practice, and training. Kester said officers have not offered any kind of apology, but they did meet with the Kesters to discuss the traffic stop. Barnhill said an internal review of the incident is being conducted. I'm Tim Brockwell. Kentucky State Police Commercial Vehicle Enforcement Division encourages safe driving this weekend for the Labor Day weekend and plans to be out in full force. The Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over campaign will have troopers watching closely for impaired drivers through Monday night. More news later right here or anytime at westkentuckystar.com.